If you were taught to report all of your answers to three significant digits, I'm going to try and convince you that this is a very bad practice. Consider what three significant digits means. It means an accuracy of 0.1% or one part in a thousand. Very few values in chemistry are this accurate. While you may be able to weigh something to five or six significant digits, impurities in most compounds limit the accuracy to two or three significant digits. In chemical reactions, other chemical reactions decrease the yield of the desired product and produce impurities. In kinetics and thermodynamics, temperature dramatically affects the reaction rates and equilibrium constants. Even at a fixed temperature, different research groups will calculate different equilibrium constants for a given reaction. Often, the values vary by a factor of 10 or more. The rules for determining the number of significant digits in a number are presented here. Leading zeros are not significant. Trailing zeros after the decimal point are significant. But it is trailing zeros before the decimal point that may or may not be significant. There is an ambiguity with trailing zeros before the decimal point. It is best to assume that they are significant until proven otherwise. What is meant by this is that it is easy to decrease the number of significant digits in a number. However, increasing the number of significant digits requires completely recalculating the value. In calculations, some numbers are exact, which means that they are not considered when determining the number of significant digits. You can assume that these numbers have an infinite accuracy. Please pause this video and write down the rules for propagating significant digits through multiplication and division mathematical operations and through addition and subtraction operations. In order to propagate significant digits through calculations, the simplest method is the significant digits method. This method estimates the number of meaningful digits that are in a calculated answer. You should be familiar with the rules for multiplication and division and for addition and subtraction. We will cover the rules for logarithms when we need to apply them.